My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today we're going to take a look at adding bokeh to a background image. Take an image that looks like that and make it look kind of something like that. Uh, this video is sponsored by our friends at Squarespace. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, but we're going to take a look at how to do this in Photoshop with a couple simple filters and selections or masks or both. It's pretty easy and it's pretty quick and I think you're really going to like it. So let's get started right now. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. We're going to take the photo of this model. It's an Adobe stock photo, uh, but it's just got some cool neon in the background. And it's an image that's very conducive to this kind of effect because we have uh, just a, a subject that's right there in the foreground. There's not a ton of depth uh, other than her hand, but her hand's going to kind of disappear. But the image will still look fine uh, the way that we're going to be doing it. So the first step is going to be make sure you have an image that is going to be conducive to a shallow depth of field effect. And if you do, it's going to be a really cool way to almost make your camera look more expensive, your lens, I should say, more expensive than it is. Uh, so instead of getting the really expensive, wide open, apertured lenses, uh, there's a little bit of this you can do digitally. It's still probably better to get the lens, but there's a lot you can do here in Photoshop. Uh, and even an image like this, where it already has shallow depth of field, but maybe you're looking at it saying this background could use more, you can use the technique there. And then here I've done it to this image. Uh, this is, well, this is the image with the blur, but if I shut off the blur, here was the image out of camera. Maybe we're looking at it saying we really want more blur in the back and we can do that if I can turn the blur back on. There we go, and then the two layers on top of it. There's a little bit of haloing, but we'll talk a little bit about that later. Point is, you can use this technique for all sorts of stuff, but this is gonna be a really cool image to do it with because this is this image works particularly well with this technique. So it all begins by selecting our subject first. So I'm gonna grab my quick selection tool, and just try dragging a selection over our model, and it's gonna give us a, a reasonably decent selection. And you really, that's kind of all you need is reasonably decent we're still going to go into select the mask and tweak it because you can see like there we're selecting a little bit of the background and think things can just kind of be cleaned up a little bit and you can see we're not selecting the hand we're going to sort of forget about the hand for a second go select and mask by hitting the select the mask button by the way there's also select select the mask it's going to bring you to this dialogue i am viewing this with the red overlay i just think it works best for this image and i can really see where my selection is going to be and then i'll zoom in here and I'll just begin cleaning up the selection a little bit. So I'm going to do this with just the straight brush tool. And I'm going to grab my tablet. And I'll use my square bracket keys to make my brush either bigger or smaller. And I will just paint over the areas that I want to keep or get rid of. I'm holding down Alter Option to switch my little plus to a minus. That's going to help get rid of areas that I want to get rid of. And again, the selections, they absolutely don't need to be perfect. Um, you don't want them to be like crazy terrible, but I'm just gonna speed over this really quickly and just clean up my selections and make my uh, make the overall image, the, the selection of her look decent. And you'll see how it all comes together once we, uh, once we go ahead and, and create that background bokeh. And there we have a reasonable selection. There, you may have an image with hair that's going crazy or more wild. You may need to use the refine edge brush a little bit. You may want to go over and do some smoothing, feathering, contracting, or contrasting, excuse me, and, as, and, and shifting the edge, which would contract your selection. But I think we're actually good where we are. The way that I'm going to output this selection is as a new layer with layer mask. I'll hit OK. And now you can see we've got her up on her own layer. And you can see See the hair doesn't look perfect at all. That's totally fine. When we turn on the background, you can see it looks fine. And because it's a mask, we can always go back in and tweak it once we add the bokeh to the background if it looks like it needs to be adjusted. I want to take a quick break and give a quick shout out to our sponsor today. That's Squarespace. They help you make amazing websites. I've had my personal photography website with Squarespace for years, and it's awesome. It's easy to edit the website, update the portfolio, enter blog posts, set up a contact form. Every, it's just so easy. It'll take you 20 minutes to build a website. It's mobile friendly. The website looks perfect on iOS phones, Android devices, pretty much any smartphone, not pretty much any smartphone, iPads, tablets, you name it, your website's going to look amazing. They got some cool uh, templates you can choose to start with and start building a site. Uh, they got a great email campaign tool that you can use to market your website. They just make building a website, even building an online store incredibly easy. Set up that e-com store and sell the stuff you make today. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. Squarespace.com slash tutvid and you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey, Squarespace, thank you. We love you very much. Thank you for supporting the channel and uh, helping us do what we do here. Here. Now back to the stuff that we really, really love. Let's get back to the tutorial. So let's hit the little unlock or lock icon to unlock the layer there. 
and we're going to right click and convert this layer to a smart object. This is just going to make it easier to work with uh, later on down the road if we decide to edit the blur or change it from what we initially create. So let's go filter and we're going to go blur gallery and choose the field blur. And you can really use any of these blurs in here. Uh, iris blur is a cool one to mess around with. Tilt shift can be cool on some landscape stuff. For here, I think field blur is going to work great for us. And uh, what I'm going to do is add a point up here next to her head. And I'm going to make this a blur of 120 pixels. We're going heavy in the blur department. And I might go over here just beneath the, uh, the letter O and the letter U and make this like uh, a one, maybe 150 pixels. So just a little more blurred. Something like that I think will work for us. And then we come down here to the effects tab where we have, of course, our bokeh. I am going to increase light bokeh to about 75. And you can see it looks really, really bad. As we go through these bokeh sliders, this is, this is obviously where the magic happens. And the balance between these three sliders is going to make all the difference in the world for you. I'm going to add a little bokeh color to this as well. And then it's up to the light range. So I want to constrain this bokeh to just the, the ultra bright areas of this image. And because I know there's neon back there, I know there is some really, really bright stuff. So let's go like 230. Uh, and you can see already that's really constraining us a lot and looking pretty decent. Um, let's try knocking the 255 down to like, I don't know, let's knock it down to 250 and see what that looks like. That's kind of cool. Um, let me try boosting the dark to like 235. What does that look like? Mm, I don't know that I like it as much. Let's uh, let's just set it back to 230. Let's leave it at 230. So I think like 230 to 250 is fine. If you don't like these little hot spots, maybe that looks a little hot for you. You would take the lighter number here and we can make this like 245 instead. Nope, that's the wrong way. I'm heading in the wrong direction. We're going to set that back to 250 and we would actually boost the black up to 235. And that'll kind of calm it down. But maybe 235 is too much. You don't have to go by five. You can go like 230, maybe 232. Look at that. That looks pretty good. It's got some of that bright snappiness, but none of those really ultra hot spots. And maybe what we can do is add a little bit more brightness by just dumping 250 down to like 248. Maybe we'll go 249. I think that'll be just perfect. And then that's it. We go ahead and hit OK. And really at this point, you would go up to your subject and zoom in on those edges and just look over them and make sure that they're still looking decent. Like that edge is kind of rough, right? We, we would go into the mask and clean that up, get rid of that little haloing edge there. The hair needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. The top of the hair is a little too soft. Uh, so all that is just a matter of refining a selection. And that's really not too crazy difficult to do at all. But... What we've done is gone from that image that does not have the bokeh in the background to one that does. And we use that same exact technique here. The blur is a little bit smaller. Maybe it's only a 60 pixel blur instead of 150 pixels. But if I push this to 150 pixels, you're going to get bigger balls of bokeh and light. And every image is going to be different. The key thing is just when you're looking at that bokeh effect area, the relationship between these four numbers is super duper important. And, you know, the difference here, if I push light bokeh down to 30, you can see it doesn't look like we got anything. It just looks like we're blurring it. If I push it up to, I don't know, 90 or 100, now everything is really hot again. So, and of course, yeah, could you adjust this by tweaking the light range? Of course. Uh, but sometimes you like the light range that you have, and it's just a matter of adding more or reducing the amount of bokeh. And sometimes it's a matter of changing the blur as well. If I knock the blur down to 75, you can see we get a totally different a bokeh pattern. In fact, it's kind of difficult to see much. Well, I guess there's a little bit of bokeh in there. But the point is, you really want to get your numbers right uh, because if you get these numbers right and they all work together, you can actually get some really nice effects. And it's just a really fun way to create artificial bokeh in Photoshop and just fake having one of those really high-end expensive lenses until you save up your money and get one for yourself. Well, that's going to be it for this one, everybody. If you enjoyed it, number one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever a new video goes live. And uh, if you like the video, check out the video that's appearing on screen right now. It's all about how to match color and lightness across a, uh, a Photoshop or photography composite image. I think you'll really enjoy it and learn a bunch of new stuff. And it's just a whole bunch of fun. Uh, just a quick reminder that I love all the people, but especially I love people like you for sticking around and watching this video all the way till the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.